Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, this is uh, the Studio Dork Podcast, episode 21. My name is Gary. Also with me is... Cameron. And today we'll be talking about some uh, new contract, but not necessarily the funnest jobs. Uh, a couple movies, including Ghost Rider 2. Also some random logo design via PayPal. Um, a couple of books and some articles coming out on the, on the site. Jewish ski trip and some New Orleans stuff. Yeah, uh, how an Apple iPhone in China can cook you some eggs. Do you like Sprite? They use the Sprites. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and uh, also why uh, some co-founder, some business co-founders should learn some code. Ah. Steve Jobs, um, something about him. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> how long do you do this for? I don't know, a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> I bought three stuff. And then Sprint uh, backs out of a deal of buying Metro PCS. Yeah? Is that true? Yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking we about. We might be week. talking about some of that stuff, I'm not sure. Yeah, totally. So get ready to listen to that interesting stuff. Some of that interesting stuff. Totally. And I don't want opinions about it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're actually recording this on a Saturday. Normally we record on Tuesdays, but um, I actually had to take care of some uh, little trips and stuff that I was on. Well, you didn't have to take care of them, but you felt like going on vacation. That's my mom, dog. Yeah, no, so... I know, I know. That is your mom. <laughs> so uh, we're actually recording this on a Saturday. This is actually the second time we are making a recording on a Saturday. Um, the other last one we did was when we had the Martin interview. That was a long time ago. Which was episode five? Yeah, it was episode, episode five, five, yeah. So this, if we sound extra hyper, that might be it. We're not as tired as we normally are, usually when we're Especially you, man, last episode. It's crazy. You were, gonna, you were like falling asleep on the mic last hey. episode. It's okay, though. Because, well, my, so, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Sometimes stuff happens, I know, I know, it's, it's cool, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, has everything been going pretty good and stuff like that? Yeah, everything's been good. How about with you? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, why is everything about you? <laughs> Yeah, because um, Cameron was telling me that a lot of my topics are about me and. But you had a lot of you had a lot of trips, so it kind of makes. Oh sense. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it still makes sense. I was just saying that a lot of your topics. Oh, just were being insult, just being insulting. Yeah, uh, off know, air and then I, on air. Oh, I'm a nice guy. Yeah, Look, I'm so to, cool. You know, I got I got to give you a little bit of credit on here because it's to the public now. You know, yeah, so. public. And it's public, recorded for Public needs to know forever. Have you ever thought about that? Like in like 20 years, when we're like old. Oh, well, and you're old, and I'm kind of old. People will still be able to hear us, like our 20 year old versions of ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Huh? It's kind of crazy. We'll be on. We'll be on. Uh, on the Are we gonna be on like episode 1,000 by then? Hopefully, daily inspiration 1 million. Dude, I can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. <laughs> but uh, I'm still continuing with some other stuff that I've been doing that I talked about on some previous podcasts. But I actually got some more little projects, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about how I'm gonna handle that actually with the uh, with my already stuff that I'm doing. And now I'm a little yeah. bit overwhelmed with things, so I'm trying to figure out because I don't want to just let it go. It's not thing like things come at you all the time. Yeah. But this, and this this seems kind of uh, not necessarily the most interesting thing. It's like, a, um, like I think it's like medical organization of medical stuff. And they have like some email things and they wanted their um, website redesigned and some, some other graphical elements that they needed. Okay, so, so you're going to be basically designing like HTML <laughs> emails and their site kind of? Something like, looks like, yeah. Okay. And they want me to come in and sign some contracts and figure all that stuff out and mm -hmm. but i'm already working with some other projects during that time so i'm trying to figure out how i could do that if they could meet up like on a weekend because the thing is that they're allowing me to work from from, from my home own, yeah from home pretty okay. much from my, from my own studio well, that's cool but i gotta figure that out um so and then randomly somebody just hit me up like a few days ago just through my email and just saying hey <clears throat> i like your work and somebody recommended me to you and i have this logo that i need like redesigned so this guy just basically got like a font that he liked on thefont.com. Yeah. <laughs> and he likes this font already and just wants to modify to give it some, some make it visually interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's a fairly easy, fairly simple task, but those, those things are fun too for me. I like things like that. But usually with things like that, it's very important to make sure that the font, you can use it commercially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said that you could, and I double checked it myself. And um, in this situation, he paid me with PayPal. So we agreed on, he's like, hey, can I pay you with PayPal or whatever? We agreed mm -hmm. on a certain price and he paid yeah. me. Things that, on the PayPal, so it charges you, like, he paid me a certain amount and it charges yeah. you a percentage, so I don't really like that. Yeah, that's I gotta figure out a better it. way, yeah. And I only communicated with him through email, and um, you want to do stuff like that where you want to talk to them in person, especially if it's a stranger, somebody you've never worked mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So I talked to him and he seemed legitimate, so he's like a DJ and stuff, he seemed like a cool guy on the phone, I had a 
um, like a couple of minute conversation with him and he described exactly what he wanted. Oh, cool. So I, I got some ideas from him. I just emailed him actually like 20 minutes ago or something like that. I worked on it last night and this morning. So I gave him a couple of versions of that. But the main thing that I wanted to mention is that you want to talk to your clients, mm -hmm. not just through email, especially if it's a brand new client. And on the PayPal thing, you want to figure out a good way to pay that you can get paid without being charged. Yeah. Is percentages. he here in LA? He happens to be in Los Angeles. So we could have, we could have worked something out yeah. better, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And like, on this PayPal thing, it says that he's unverified. Oh, That's also so. but the thing is that the PayPal you have it like verified. So when mm -hmm. people, you know, because eBay owns PayPal. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you see it's a verified person, that means their address and their credit card or the bank account has been checked by PayPal already, and it's it's more legitimate when it says verified oh, okay. um, on there. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. That's cool. So and then I have some other little things going on, but yeah, you went you went on a uh, ski trip, I right? I did, but oh, I didn't go skiing. You didn't actually go skiing. <laughs> So you didn't get to French fry or pizza? I didn't get to do, I didn't get to French fry or pizza. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cameron told me about that, guys, about the French fry or pizza thing, and I got hungry. I didn't really know what it was exactly. But Yeah, exactly. It was cool, though. But tell them what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a visual thing. I don't think I could tell them what it is. Or podcast. explain it. <laughs> it's like slowing down or speeding up when you're skiing. I've never been skiing before, but I've always seen it on, like, TV shows and movies. I learn a lot of my stuff from TV and movies, unfortunately. So, but yeah, and I just told that to you as a joke, and then you said you told them, and then... Everybody knew what you were talking about, and you felt cool, right? Mm hmm Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. No, basically, you're such a bad explainer sometimes. Normally, you're good. Um, but basically... <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> no, it's basically you open your legs. You put your legs straight, right? Yeah, it's french fries, and that's, that's french how you're gaining fall. speed. And then Not you how you gain down. speed. And then to slow down, you put your legs together, so it looks like a... like a. You put the front of your skis together to form a triangle, so it's supposed to slow you down. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think it needed that much explanation. That's why I didn't explain <laughs> Someone's that offended! Much. But it's cool. But while you were out trying to ski and stuff, I actually went and saw Ghost Rider 2. Uh-huh. And that has to be one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. Oh, is that horrible? <laughs> yeah, it was really, really bad. I um, Luckily, it was a free screening I went to, but people I was with fell asleep during it. And it was really short, and it felt too long. It was just the acting was really bad, and... I don't know, I thought... I, the first one was already bad, but I think it was better than this one. And I don't want to go too much into detail, because there might be someone that's listening that's like, Oh, I really want to see that. Even though I know it's going to be really bad, I still want to see it. And I don't want to be spoiler or anything, so... But yeah, definitely, if you get a chance, check it out just because of how bad it is. But if you really <laughs> don't want to see a bad movie, just don't... Just wait for it to be on Netflix or something. People, people that probably like, it's from a comic book, right? Yeah, it's become from, from a comic book, but me and this other dude that I was with yeah. are super into comics and he hated it, but he saw it during a test screening and he thought it might be better when the visual effects were done, but... It was still pretty horrible. He said he hated it. They show it a lot of the, those visual effects in the trailer, huh? Pretty much, like, half of the good ones are already shown in yeah. the trailer. Yeah, and that's what I went. I went, I went for knowing the story was going to suck, but I was like, you want to, even the story will suck, I'm sure the visual effects will be good, but even the visual effects were not, I don't know, they just, there was something still really cartoony about it that I just, it didn't feel right. But the interesting thing about it, though, I was, like, looking up box office numbers and what they spent on it. So they spent, like, $57 million on it, which is a lot of money, actually, for, like, a smaller budget film. And so it's Nicolas Cage, right? Yeah, Nicholas Cage. Not, he's not the most cheapest actor, though. That's, that's yeah. what it's worth. That's probably the most... But the thing is, money. he's not a very good actor. He, I mean, there, he has been a very good actor in some things, what but... What was that Disney movie he came out and I really liked that National one. National Treasure? I like that one, the first one. You know, the first one wasn't bad, but I feel like... The thing with Nicholas Cage is if you've seen a ton of his movies, like, especially now, it's almost like you're... It's like Keanu Reeves. He plays the same character throughout all of his movies, so it's like... Vince Vaughn plays the same character, and I love that character. Yeah, but... I think Vince Vaughn changes it up just enough to where I don't think that he plays the exact same character. He plays pretty much the exact same character, yeah. usually. Even from, like, back in Swingers, or do you think it's just more recent? No, the same character, like, from Swingers, he usually plays, except, like, in Psycho, that's the only thing different. Or yeah, he, that one was weird. I remember watching It's the Psycho only one, one, and everything else, every movie he plays, although you do have a point, Um, it just depends on if you really like that character. That's true. And that I really I really like the Vince Vaughn's, like, it's like some kind of... Like, yeah. uh, that, hum that type of humor, I really like it, but back to your... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah, so Nicolas Cage might have been a lot of this budget, but, yeah, so $57 million, and right now, worldwide, so it's only been out for, this is the second weekend it's mm -hmm. been out, it's only made $42 million. so they're gonna make probably their money back, and maybe get a little bit extra, but, I don't know, I don't expect, I don't, I hope they don't make another, a third one, I think that they should just let Stop. it... Stop. Was the first one good? Did you see that one? The first one was not very good, but it was better than this this new one. Because mm -hmm. at least the visual effects were, like, groundbreaking back then, but now it's just kind of same old, same old yeah. type thing, you know? Uh, the only cool thing in it, though, there was one cool part about it that I did like, and it kind of tied back to the comics. So in the comics, you know his motorcycle in yeah. the movie? 
how once he sits on the motorcycle, it gets all flamey and it like mm -hmm. becomes all devilish. And there's stuff. a lot of fire about this. Thing. Yeah, yeah, believe me, there's a lot of fire. But <laughs> but in the comics, he can actually sit on any vehicle and control it, and it will all of a sudden turn into like the devil fire. mode. And he does that with some crazy stuff. Like so, I, is he actually sorry to interrupt? Is no. he actually like an actual uh, devil? Like a good devil? No, no, no. Um, they explain that kind of in the movie, but I can I can just elaborate on a little bit. So he's actually he's possessed kind of with this spirit. So it's this angel that was made to protect humans from like all other like bad things. And then he got taken down to hell and the devil actually corrupted him and made him become where he has this thirst to avenge. So basically oh, just to, yeah, just to basically kill people that are corrupted. You know, we're, we're, we're pu giving publicity more than no, I know we're taking away. People are going to like the two people they're listening they're gonna listen they're gonna go watch the movie. No, I know. Well, the agency I work for did a little marketing, so pay my pay my bills. That's all I'm doing. No, yeah, so. good move. <laughs> no, but yeah. So if you get a chance, go straight or maybe check it out. If you haven't seen the first one, I'd say go see the first one, see how bad that one is, and then go see the second one and see how much worse the second one is. So, but yeah, so go straight. That uh, uh, that trip that we were talking about where the pizza and the and the yeah the pizza French and fr French fries, yeah. <laughs> So that was actually um, a trip. It was a, a, like a little Jewish thing that I went with, like a Jewish group. Yeah. And a friend of mine invited me to it. Mm -hmm. And um, actually my developer friend, Michael, I mentioned a couple times. Yeah. Uh, some other podcasts. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to go. It was like a few day thing. It was in Big Bear. I never, I've never been to Big Bear before. Mm -hmm. And I don't really, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about my culture, about my mm -hmm. background. Because I'm not really super religious, but my grandpa was. So I'm trying to learn about all that stuff. And I did Shabbat for the first time ever. That's like where I couldn't really touch um, electricity or couldn't... So were you not allowed to use your phone that entire day? I wasn't allowed to use my phone from like five... I mean, I could, but mm -hmm. my friend said... My my friend told me like all the stuff that you could yeah. do. Mike, he explained it. You really can't do anything with electricity. You can't fix anything. Like if a button breaks, you can't fix it. Mm -hmm. And you can't go like certain... That's like... But you really could do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm yeah. not like super religious, but I was just going with the flow. Yeah, yeah with totally. It. It's a respect thing kind of thing. It's a respect right? thing. And I just wanted to go through it and see... What it was like. What it's like. And uh, you feel like, whoa, it feels weird. You can't like take pictures and put them on path and Facebook and see what everyone's doing and can't spy on your friends <clears throat> for a little while. But yeah, it was from Friday sundown, like around four something mm -hmm. or five something till yeah. sun up on Saturday. Oh, so it wasn't, it wasn't too It was bad. about 24 hours. I thought it was like during the day, like when you were like, cause I remember, um, there was a lot of, a lot of food and there was a lot of, uh, different, uh, activities and then we would, we would sit down and talk about stuff and they talked about, uh, like the Torah and a lot of different ways, the mm. way it's connected back to life. And it's really, um, educational and you see how everything's connected That's and cool. how, how people had these ideas about all these different things that we're going through now. Had, they had like all these answers 5,000 years ago, whenever, whenever yeah, yeah. that was written and the entire Torah is handwritten. Mm -hmm. So if you mess up, you got to start over, and the cheapest one is ten thousand dollars, and it's really really expensive. So mm -hmm. the entire thing is written by hand. Oh, that's it's really cool. crazy. So that trip was from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But mm -hmm. I came back Sunday. I came back earlier, so I actually didn't go skiing, even though it was a skiing place. Some mm -hmm. people did because the skiing was on a Sunday, and I had to come back a day earlier. So I caught a ride with some new friends that I made. Oh, caught a ride back with them, and that everybody was going skiing that day. So I missed out on the skiing thing. But it's fine. I'll do skiing some other time. Yeah, but totally. the whole experience is very. I was very um, happy with it. Good, and it was man. Pretty, it was pretty good times. But the things that I, uh, that Monday, mm -hmm. the, the the day after, I, that's the reason I came back Sunday. So I went to New Orleans. I actually got invited to that. I'm like. A few months back mm -hmm. uh, by some friends yeah so I so that's why I had to come back early so I went to New Orleans for Mardi Gras that was pretty good times yeah. people were throwing beads and hanging out and laughing so um, I enjoyed myself over there that was a, I had to cat had to take the airplane mm -hmm. over there it's, I think it's an interesting combination you went to a, a really religious thing over the weekend and then during the week you went to something that's not so religious it's not so religious and, like partying. yeah it's kind of like partying and stuff like right there but why are they partying? What's the purpose of that? I have know? no idea what Mardi Gras is for. I just know that people. Yeah, I don't know either. But it goes back to the topic that you were talking about. What that your friends told you not to be vegetarian. Yeah, it has to do with Lent. Well, so that people want to sin before they can't. Oh, really? Yeah, it's connected to that. So people want to party and um, supposedly all this bad stuff and blah blah blah. Oh. It's connected with that. It's totally religious. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, I didn't crazy. either. So I thought that was interesting when uh, when they told me about that. Oh. But I'm really tall. Yeah. So I was just they were throwing all these beads like the first day on Monday. I was them. just catching. I was just going around jacking them from people like, oh, cool beads, mm -hmm. and they're throwing them to people, and I just go and take it right before them. Oh. <laughs> so I was trying to get these real cool ones. There was these real fat, like almost like Christmas ornaments. 
Yeah. One. But I would get those and everybody else would get them and those would like break. And a couple of times I got them, but like people would ask me to give it to them or whatever. So I was just giving them away, whatever. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah that, was, that was a pretty cool, cool time. And see what else. Do we, oh, we ate a lot of like fried chicken, a lot of good, a lot of good fried chicken places. And I don't you know, I like yeah, Popeyes. Yeah, you post a ton of photos <laughs> of food that <laughs> yeah. would probably like give people heart attacks if you eat it too much. And yeah. I, had, uh, I had lobster, like a real lobster. I one saw of the, that photo too. Yeah. And I, I was trying so hard to take a good picture of that and I couldn't. The lighting was so bad in there. Oh, yeah? I made somebody hold the thing while I was taking because it because it the lamp was right and it was really dark in there. That lobster was really big and... Interesting looking, all the little shapes on it and stuff, yeah. but I couldn't get a good photo of that. So I ate a lot of chicken, seafood. Um, oh, I had crocodile. I know, I saw that good. post. You said crocodile tastes like chicken. <laughs> crocodile does taste does like it? chicken. Does oh, it? interesting. So does rabbit. But I had crocodile. That was pretty cool. And now I came back to reality a couple of days ago. Yeah. And reality's still good. Yeah. Reality's still good. That's good. That's good, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess while you were gone, what I was doing <laughs> again... <laughs> Uh, so over the weekend, I went down to the bookstore that me and Gary went to like the weekend before and I bought a bunch of books. I know I said I was going to buy stuff on, on the pad, but I decided just to buy physical books for some reason. So. You cheated on me on the, with the bookstore? I you went behind dude. my back, in front I of my did. back? I totally, right in front of your back <laughs> and behind it. So uh, one of the books that I picked up, because what I'm doing right now is I'm actually, re I'm reading a bunch of books for that are, that movies are now going to be based on. So there's yeah. a bunch of movies that are coming out in the next like couple years that are based on a couple books. Uh, one of those books was uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. And when I first heard of this book, I thought it was going to be really dumb. But it's actually one of the coolest books I think I've read like in a long time. I know you don't read a, a ton of books, but this is a, a book that you may be interested in actually. So what it is is basically this guy, he took all these autobiographies and biographies that were written about Abraham Lincoln and he read through them and made sure that he just double checked everything and then he went and, and he set vampires in there as well. So it's, you learn the history of Abraham Lincoln, so you learn how he was born and where he lived and all that stuff and that's all true. And then he just fit vampire stuff into it. So now he's a vampire hunter at night, and then he's the president during. The Abraham day. Lincoln is a vampire hunter. Yeah, he's the vampire hunter, and it's so crazy because there's some things in here that I didn't even know. Like I don't know if this is the true part. See, there's some stuff that's a little bit like like un unclear, but like so so Abraham Lincoln supposedly met Edgar Allan Poe, and I don't know if that's true or not. But in this book, they're like really good friends, and I thought that was really interesting. There's stuff like that, but. Definitely get a chance to uh, check it out. Uh, if not, there's a movie actually coming out. It's right now, I think it's slated for June 22nd of this year. But it could still get pushed or whatever. Right? Yeah, it could still get pushed and so that's not a set date. But um, it definitely, it seems really interesting. And I, they actually released a trailer on President's Day for this, the first trailer. And it, it looks pretty awesome. It looks like it's going to be more of an action movie than anything. Which like, uh, kind of like, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, that detective. What detective? Um, Sherlock Holmes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that was such an action movie. But it's kind of like, you know, same, it's in, it seems like it's that same era. Possibly. Yeah, a little bit, not so much. I think that when when was see we had a little dead air and I didn't I didn't I'm, mention it I'm but now I'm mentioning it tonight kind of reset I wasn't uh, yeah but because <laughs> me and Cameron well, we we have like sometimes we get stuck and we don't say anything for like five ten seconds yeah. and then um um then I'll make fun of it and then now and then he can't take it out because it won't make sense yeah, so that purposely yeah. did that they need to know that <laughs> no of course yeah just like they can't know that we're restructuring but oh you <laughs> took it to another level. level. <laughs> But no, so, uh, yeah, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Uh, <laughs> That's, on, that sounds interesting, what you mentioned with the, yeah. know, during the day. and that, that sounds like something I would want to see. Yeah, I, so, like, I like Sherlock Holmes. I didn't see the second Sherlock Holmes, and I, but I saw the first Sherlock Holmes, and that, that seems like it would be something like that. I know the second one was pretty good, too, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, definitely. Vis visually, it was really good. I think the story was a little long, but I think that visually... It, it, I think when you go into any movie... Even if the story's gonna suck, you should just be happy for the visual effects because it's stuff that you'll never see in real life. Most and of the time. people are paying millions and billions or whatever dollars to entertain us for one hour and twenty minutes. Oh, Think yeah. about that. Yeah, that's Some, but they're paying so much money for us to go in the movie true. theater and spend twelve dollars. They spend millions and millions of dollars for that for us to spend that twelve dollars. You could look at it that way too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we both we well, I we both kind of have worked in the industry a little bit, and yeah, we both see the, the crazy budgets and the amount of money people will pay for. Something even just like to advertise like for like a couple banners, like how much money people would pay for that. It's crazy, man. So I think that definitely You know how I always say the idea is worth more than the um than actually going through with it and creating it. Yeah. I always say the idea is the most valuable thing. So I got an argument with my developer friend. Usually we agree about everything. Okay. The the guy that invited me to the Jewish trip. Mm-hmm. But he was saying that uh, the idea is not the most valuable thing. The, ex the execution of the ideas was what's more valuable. So we got an argument about that. that was a I always believe you, you get a good idea, mm -hmm. a very good idea, and you find 
how to execute it. You either hire people or you get tools or this and that, yeah. and you execute the idea. But he's saying, no, well, I have plenty of good ideas, but it's the execution of the idea that um, that I need that mm-hmm. I need to go, get, go through with for it to be successful. And this is a really smart and intelligent guy. Yeah. Usually, and we usually agree on everything. This mm-hmm. is the first like thing that we had a big debate about. And although he has a little bit of a point, I still I still strongly um, believe that a good idea is worth uh, way more than actual execution because you have a really good idea like Facebook. Say no one ever came up with Facebook, then yeah. you find the right tools, mm-hmm. you find the right people to, to do that. And the reason I came up on this topic is because you're mentioning sucky movies. Sometimes the movies can be can be sucky and you just yeah. add you add extra stuff to make it less sucky. Yeah. But like a really good idea, for example, like uh like what I was saying, I went to that play a couple of weeks ago that yeah. my friend invited me mm-hmm. to. There was no action or nothing. It was just the idea, those ideas were very strong. It was just regular mm-hmm. lifestyle. They were they were so strong and didn't need any of that, and, and it was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. So, I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, I can tell you what I've heard um, some of the art directors say. One of the things... So, you guys are both right mm-hmm. in, in certain points, but there's a quote. I don't know who said it, but this is what one of the art directors always says to me is, an idea is only as good as your execution. So, your idea can be amazing, but then you have a terrible execution. So... You guys are both right. You guys just need to combine your brains, and it will be right. You guys are both right in parts. Like you, yeah, the idea is a big deal. But what happens once original ideas are no more? Because we're coming on, we're coming up to an era where now, or well, we are already kind of in that era, but I think we're coming up into an era where original ideas are going to be more scarce than they already are. Like we are, we always talk about it. Like when we see, like, oh, we should come up with an app idea. Oh, someone, five people have already done it. But then how good is the execution of that? Should we just go and take their idea and combine it with another idea and then all of a sudden our execution is better so therefore it's a better idea? You know no, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Because there's so many things going on in this world and there's so many mm-hmm. things already that exist, that's what you have to do. You have to jack everyone's ideas and you mix them up and you make it into yeah. your, own, your own unique idea. There is no mm-hmm. such thing as an original idea, obviously. There's no such thing. We've existed, we've been alive way too yeah. long mm-hmm. for that. Not, for there is, so there's really no such thing. So all the good ideas is basically other ideas mixed together and made exactly. into its own unique yeah. Mm-hmm. entity. Yeah, so like, like I said, you guys are both kind of right, but I do th- I, I believe in that quote. That quote, actually, when my art teacher said it to me, it's been written on my whiteboard since the day he said that to me. An idea is only as good as I've heard, I've heard of that before. I don't know who said it, but it's like a really amazing quote, and I think that like when I think of ideas now, no, I think of the best way to execute now. And it makes, true, it makes sense yeah. if you have a good idea, but you don't have a real good team to... To uh, to accomplish those ad- the idea, yeah. it's not going to be a good thing. Obviously, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just always I've, that's I've always been a strong believer of actually having the idea first. Somebody comes up with the idea. That person could be could do nothing. He just comes up with the idea and then gets the right team to do it, and then everyone else does everything. He just came up with the idea. Yeah, but, but also there's also business and all this other stuff involved to it. Too. Yeah, but I w- to be honest with you, like I would never want to become. Like, good example, at the agency I work at, the creative director doesn't do any designing. He just comes up with ideas. That's basically all the creative go- all the creative director does. He just and sits those, in a room and comes up with ideas. And those, those are usually the high, high paid ones, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've been in meetings with that guy, and that's all he does, just sit there and he just talks about ideas. And I think that's cool, but I was talking to someone else, and they were asking me, like, what my goals were. And I was like, I don't ever want to be a creative director because I always want to be designing a little bit. You know? As well, I agree with you. I don't like. I don't like. I, don't I like doing. Idea, I like doing ideas, but I don't yeah. like. I don't want to just sit there and only do ideas. I actually like creating yeah. the things. I like people to see something that mm-hmm. they haven't seen before to actually be able to um, appreciate appreciate mm-hmm. it visually, not just from not just from saying it. Yeah, exactly. But I, I, so I agree with that. I like creating stuff. Yeah, so same here. So that I don't know. I just I think the idea is a big big part of it, but I definitely think that if you can. I don't want to ever be that guy that just like comes up with the idea and says, "Here, you guys do it." I just, you know, what I mean, I'd rather have some hand in it physically rather than just emotion- yeah! emotionally. <laughs> but yeah, so the show's too good, and then we gotta make it worse. Let's let's have some bad topics. Yeah, okay. Some let me go into some bad topics. I can't actually on this one, so that goes right into this, which is really interesting. You're welcome. I found this on CNET. <laughs> I haven't really read completely through it yet, but I, I wanted to bring it up because I thought it was an interesting point. So this entrepreneur emailed this business analyst uh, from CNET about. He basically asked this question. He said. Do you need to be an expert in coding to build a successful startup, or can you employ experts to do the technical work for you? And this this guy went and he started exploring it, this guy named Ben Parr, and he basically came up with an idea that you don't necessarily, that entrepreneurs nowadays need to know a little bit of code, just enough to be able to understand what they're doing. And he brought up a couple of places like Code Academy, which I have never heard of Code Academy, but I was kind of trying to do research, but their site was down, which is really weird because it's a code. It's all about code and their site's down. But yeah, Code Academy supposedly is what he talks about, how a lot of small entrepreneurs that have internet startups go with 
I just thought it was an interesting point. I just wanted to get you because I know that you've been trying to learn a little more CSS and like code recently, right? So do you think it's necessary? Like if you have no background in design or any type of development at all, but you want to start a, a business and you know the business side, do you think that you should know like a yes. decent amount of code? <clears throat> I think you should know not crazy amount of code, but you yeah. should know enough to understand what's happening or what needs to happen or how complicated mm -hmm. something is. But not be like a super expert and know mm -hmm. custom JavaScript and whatever, all this other stuff. But uh, pretty much CSS, even to CSS3, yeah. which is pretty much the same thing. There's updated some stuff in there. Yeah. And HTML is, is fine. HTML5, it gets a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. But still, it's still a good, you should, should still know all that stuff. If you're in the industry, you should know. You know, if you're in the business for mm -hmm. that stuff, if you're doing web stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. even, if, even from the business side, you should still know. Um, you just don't know enough to understand what's necessary and what the challenges are. Yeah, this is uh, what Ben Parr said is uh, he brought up a good point. Of these are what he thinks that most business owners should kind of understand is like some of their basic tasks as far as programming is concerned is to find and fix bugs or at least be able to identify a bug and identify where it may be messing up. Uh, imp implement small features, so stuff like say that like you have a banner on your site, you don't want to have to hire a developer to just put that banner on your site. You want to be able to do it yourself. And then... Um, manage a site design so you want to be able to like if you have a designer designing it you want to be able to go into it maybe look at what they're doing and understand how it's going to work in the code a little bit yeah. like understand how stuff's going to function and then also understand how um, your product works on a technical level so if you have if your product is all internet based and you do like say you have a site that does like flash games or something you want to understand like why those flash games have to be a certain size or why you know how many resources they're taking if it's not working in a certain like flash um, version of flash or something you want to know all that stuff so that's like the small stuff that they say that like you should kind of know as far as technical and coding wise as a business yeah all that stuff makes sense what you mentioned so um, I yeah. just thought this article was interesting. That is. So. That, all that stuff uh, makes sense. I agree with that guy. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, definitely check it out. Ben Parr, I've never actually read any of his stuff, but this is really... I've never... This is the first time, so yeah. definitely check him out. Ben Parr on CNET. Good one. Yeah, so it'll be in the show notes if you guys want to check it out. And if it's not in the show notes, just keep rewinding and type in Ben Parr, CNET, and you'll find it. <laughs> because we talked about last show. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, rewind so. it so you can get the right name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That's cool, man. But, uh... Do you like drinking Sprite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually like Sprite better than everything else because it has no caffeine in it. So are you sure it doesn't have caffeine in it? And they say it doesn't. No, have I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it does. <laughs> I, but, I trust um, them. You trust them? I trust the they know. Yeah, of yeah, course. they're them. They're them. They're they're so them. They know what's up. Yeah. No, but uh, so I've been doing um in the office. I've been do working on some web stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have the design, and it was liked, and everything like that. It was approved, so okay. the start the developer started uh, building it and doing all the different things. Normally, I've just been handing off in the past mm -hmm. when I've worked with developers and stuff. I've yeah. just given them the PDF, and they've created all the stuff for themselves. You know what they needed. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, um, they asked me to create the sprites for them. Okay. So I just wanted to explain what that is exactly. Some people might know, and some people mm -hmm. might not. You're familiar with what that is, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's like uh, it's normally a PNG, and it'll have pretty much most of your images that you would have on your site mm -hmm. and it'll have those images um, with, with a transparent background usually mm -hmm. and rather than you know how you have all your images loading into one into different places this way it just loads once and it load and then um, it there's there's different size divs and it'll just load in a different um, areas of that sprite so it's just an yeah. image with different mm -hmm. um, the images that are on your, on your site already yeah, a good, translation. A good example is uh, <laughs> ask.com, right? Mm -hmm. I've never been able to get this to work on any browser that I've ever worked on, but you've shown it to me before. Where if you were to find a way to just right click like the, the background or something yeah. and view just the background, it's basically just an image that has all your buttons, like everything. Basically, if you've ever seen a UI kit, yeah. if you go online and you download a UI kit, it's basically a Photoshop file with all of your buttons and everything all just on one giant page. Yeah. So essentially any gradient, anything at all, anything will all be on that one sheet and then it just loads a section of that. So the entire image loads once yeah. and then it just loads it into certain divs so then it all fits and it'll just duplicate it's the image. pretty cool. Times, and, then, yeah. and then it makes it easier rather than going and changing. I mean, it, in the beginning, he just it take, probably takes a little bit longer to set up, but then when you change stuff, you just change mm -hmm. stuff on one image and it gets changed. Yeah. Pretty cool idea. I, and I'm not positive how it originally got came, who came up yeah. with it or what, but mm -hmm. it must have came something from animation. I'm thinking it had to be something with maybe because you have different frames and then you'll move. But this is just my obviously yeah. it's my own opinion. Huh. I'm not positive, but I think that's what it came from. And I thought it was a 
I just wanted to mention that to people, people that might not know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if we described it well enough. Some people might be still be confused about yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of a hard thing to describe. It is. On, uh, maybe in the show notes we will... Have a link to it, like to Wikipedia or something like that. Or right? we can just probably just go and ask dot com and then get the image link everybody link. a lot of a lot of sites use it we have that no, on our site too yeah you know, i know i know we do yeah it's uh but it's a really what i think is more interesting about it is the fact that it uses the fact that it uses less resources it just uses one image and those that one image loads. that's the most powerful part of it actually is the part that your site will load so much faster because you're loading one image essentially it could it could yeah it depends because they usually pngs is huge those are uncompressed files. Yeah. so that in itself is usually they're pretty large Mm-hmm. But it just depends. There's still some situations where it's better to have separate files when you have like a really, really, mm-hmm. really large image. You just keep those as like a separate JPEG. Mm-hmm. But overall, you, you go sprite. I thought it was a, it's a pretty cool concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when so. you when when you first brought up the sprite topic, I actually thought you were talking about video games for a second because I read it on. We kind of read each other's notes today, which is very different. Yeah, usually we don't do. do that, but we just wanted to read each other's notes. Um, because we wanted, I, I brought up the point that we should maybe bring up our stuff in the beginning uh, of the of the show. Yeah. And then Cameron also agreed with that and he thought it was a good idea. But then he suggested that we should look at each other's notes. We're better prepared for each other's stuff when we give each other better transitions. It's a good idea. Yeah, so when you first, uh, when I f- read the sprites, because I think on there you said, do you like sprite? I think was what you read earlier, I think, or you just talked about sprites. And I thought you were talking about video game, because the video game was a little like digital, like the, the digital look is called sprite artwork or whatever. What did I put? I don't know. The usage of sprites. Oh, the usage of sprites. Okay. Well, but anyways, uh, this is all of this talking right now is just so I can get to this. Uh, do you like pinball? Oh, so <laughs> worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, pinball's cool. Yeah. It's, did you play a lot of pinball games when you were young? I don't remember playing it, but whenever I did, it was always fun. I remember. I yeah. remember back in the Windows ninety five days, there was some there was some game. Oh, so you, but I'm talking actual like pinball actual machines. Pinball. <laughs> But in Windows 95, I used to download demos and just free games and try to play as much as well, possible. Well, this doesn't affect you at all, okay? Let <laughs> Back me, in the days. This doesn't affect you at everything's all. Everything's got to be about you, man. I'm just saying. So, we're bringing up all this pinball stuff because yeah? a pinball pioneer died this week. Oh, really? Yeah. Steve Kordek died. That name means nothing to you or me because I just learned about it about an hour ago. No, it means but, something. To me, it's sad. When, any, when, you, when yeah. people die, it's bad. Well, this uh, Steve Kordek died at age 100 but he is and he lived to the age 100 yeah it's crazy it's pretty crazy if you think about it triple digits but um he he's actually been working he well he worked in in 60 years in the game industry basically designing and developing pinball machines and one of the things that he came up with was he came up with a lot of stuff like the multi-ball mode and drop targets and stuff like that but i just thought it was interesting like because you never really think of like pinball like i don't know pinball machines to me always just felt like they were never designed like when you're younger when you're playing you never think like oh this was designed someone thought really hard to make sure this bank was high enough for the ball to actually roll around yeah. it's just really interesting from a design standpoint now being a designer knowing that everything in that machine from the a little screw all the way up to like a huge led display it's all been designed by somebody at some point and decided yeah. that something needed to work a certain way and i just thought it was interesting because I mean, this guy did it for 60 years, man. It's so crazy, you know? So, I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, I think the idea of pinball is pretty cool, actually. It is a really cool idea. Such a simple thing, and they they have all these little adventures that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I guess the stuff that Steve Kordek designed probably still was implemented in those those digital versions. I haven't played a ton of analog ones either, but definitely, like... Imagine imagine designing those things. It'll be really fun. Could you imagine... Really, really fun. Could you imagine the first pitch for it? Some guy's just like, I want this game. Yeah. And I want this ball to go around and hit all these things, and then you get points on this board in front. It just seems like such a crazy, like... Well, most things... Seem what, crazy in the beginning. In the beginning, like, uh, was it Walt Disney that created the theme park? The original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, he... Imagine him going to, like, a bunch of people, hey, let's make this big thing in the middle of nowhere, and with all these rides and people having fun. People probably looked at him, like, ridiculously, well, too. Well, he actually designed stuff for the World's Fair, originally, and then that's where um, the one ride, the um, It's a Small World, mm-hmm. was originally he designed it for... It's a, or for the World's Fair. Someone designed it for the World's Fair, and then he bought it from the World's Fair. And so, like, all those boats and stuff are actually from the World's Fair in 1950 or something. So what you're crazy. telling me is that he was the voice of Mickey. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, but did you know... He was the original voice of Mickey. Yeah, man. I took a uh, history of animation class. There's some... 
pretty crazy stuff. Like in he must have past. invented. He must have invented a lot of ways that are they're being done because of him, right? They oh yeah, up with yeah, a lot yeah. Of yeah. Like the way the animation is done with the cells, and it's hard to explain this on an audio thing, but the way that stuff was done back in the day is they would paint a background yeah. onto a cell, and and these are in, these are see through cells. Oh, what do you mean by cell? So cells are these um like you, you remember those projectors? You'd have those laminate things, those right. plastic, and you, you, teachers would write on it or whatever. Right, right. So it's like that. So it's like a plastic screen you. like that, and they would paint these backgrounds on them, and then they paint another layer so they paint another one and everything be stacked in this giant stack um with probably like a couple of inches in between each one of these cells and each one would be like a layer so like in photoshop you got layers right yeah, exactly. and then there'd be a camera at the very top of this stack and so then they would move the cells to create animation between the things so if you look at like like good examples like if you look at any of the old disney movies whenever they have a background moving and then they have the foreground moving too and the camera moves past the foreground and into the background what all it's doing is it's the camera lens is just zooming into past the first cell into the next cell behind it so it's almost creating a and this is all done depth. by hand this is all done by hand it was this huge machine cool. that they stood up on top of and that's why like cell painting is so crazy like he, like tim burton painted background cells for um fox and the hound i brought that up before but that's just so amazing to me that someone tim burton someone that's so contemporary that does a ton of movies now he was actually there back using then, an old school technique. doing old school techniques so i don't know i just thought i just think it's so crazy some of the stuff how do we get into all these topics? Uh, Freestyle! I don't know, but one of the things I did want to bring up <laughs> was, was Walt Disney, actually. Something so stupid, like something so small minute that we take for granted every single day is the top tier trash can. We invented that? The thing where like it makes it so the trash can doesn't smell, so then you just push that little flap in and push it in. Oh, I didn't know that. Disney was the very first place that ever had that. Everyone oh, else... no, I think I heard the way one of our teachers at school tell us that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember this teacher that you're talking about. I know, yeah, I remember yeah. this. Yeah, I remember it was... Uh, Illustrate or he taught Photoshop, advanced Photoshop, and yeah. and some other stuff as well. He's yeah, a yeah, really yeah. good teacher. This person we're talking about. Should we? Should we? Uh, yeah, he's should, a, we can talk about him. Should we yeah. should we should mention his name. Yeah. Nobody nobody will ever. But you know, some people listening to this podcast are gonna know who he is too. That's fine. So it's uh, Jerry Miller. Jerry he, Miller. He's a professional illustrator. He's been doing illustration and design for like twenty something years, right? Yep. And he actually used to tell us about how he was in the beta for Photoshop. Yeah, like he used the original thing. Photoshop and back in the, like in the uh, probably late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, it was like multiple floppy disks or something. He said it was like how you had to save yeah. your files. And he went. He went to a real school. He went to a real art school. I don't know where he went. In New York. It was in I New think. York, though. Yeah. I almost want to say it's um, SVA, but that could be wrong. Uh, because I don't know how long SVA has been around, but but yeah, he's he's really cool, and he used to always tell he taught illustration Photoshop. You can check him out, uh, Jerry Miller Illustration com, I think. I believe so, yeah. Or you could just look Jerry Miller Illustration. I think he still had one of my pieces on his site. From a he probably years does. Ago. Yeah, yeah, you could probably go on there and see one of your composites, right? It was yeah. the island composite. Back in the days. Yeah, that's. But I just wanted to, we just wanted to bring this teacher up. He was very um, a really good teacher and had a really good uh, teaching style. Yeah, he show examples and all this different stuff. Yeah, and he was always into technology. Like he was the one, first teacher that I think I saw that used Keynote mm -hmm. and then had it sync between his I iPhone. His iPhone, so he would read all the slides on his iPhone, but then the slides would say something totally yeah. different on them. It was a lot of really cool technology-wise stuff. So definitely. and he was he was always talking about like Comic Con. He was into comics and into different illustrators. And he's the one that told us the best place. Like if you like illustrations, like Cameron's way more into illustration yeah. than me, but I I like it as well. I like mm -hmm. looking at different designs and layouts, but. He was one of the main people that brought up to our attention that if you like illustrations and you go to bookstores, and make sure to go to the kids sections. Those yeah. have, those have the best um, like illustration stuff. So like we, when me and Cameron went to the bookstore a few weeks ago, we went to the kid section, but we didn't want to look creepy over there. We, I, I always <laughs> do end up in the kid section, but it's because we, of him, right? Yeah, and me he, too. He's totally right. Yeah. I mean, I never thought about it, and then I started thinking about it, looking back at all of my old children's books that I had when I was younger, and. Yeah, man, we were, I seriously, like, I think that when we go to the bookstore, we should just hang out in there. Like, screw going anywhere else. But we do feel a little creepy when there's kids around, because then we're like, we don't have we're kids. Adults. We're adults. <laughs> we're in adults. the kids section. Yeah. But then, there's all these different illustration styles, and yeah. all this, like, some stuff is so simple, but it's just, there's just something about it, right? Like, we saw some stuff that was just, it was looked like it was just paint splashed, or something like that. Yeah, like, a perfect example is the Caterpillar book. That book is just like these big red and green dots. It's essentially all it is. And it looks like they were just done in acrylics. Like they were just like big red and green dots. And that's such an old book. So I don't know. It's just, and I remember having that as a kid and loving that book. And it was just, all it is is these little caterpillars like done in abstract on white. It's so crazy, man. But 
Yeah, if you get a chance and you didn't, you didn't ever think of that, head into a kid, kid's book section. Don't seem creepy. Just you know, grab a couple books, read through it, and be cool. Yeah, and if you like illustrations, so like like we say, it's good. It's some good inspirations there for you guys. Yeah, totally. Hey, wasn't it just somebody's birthday? No, it was uh, Steve Jobs' birthday. Oh, okay. Um, on uh, I think yesterday. Today we're recording this on Saturday. I yeah. think February twenty fifth is today. What's well, his fifty seventh birthday, right? Fifty seventh. I think I saw something like that online. Why are you but... taking my topics, man? I'm not, dude. I'm just adding to it. What's up? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so it was a happy birthday to Steve Jobs. Yeah, sucks he didn't make it to this birthday. Too soon? Way too soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so we just wanted to um, give a shout, and shout I didn't out. Know, shout out. And I didn't know he was a uh, uh, Pisces like myself. We're sensitive. Oh, yeah? Awesome. So you're making new apples, what you're saying? I am making... No. no <laughs> I'm making not, a new apple. Not making a new apple? <laughs> So you're telling me that we're doing Studio Dork and it's not going to be the next apple. I don't know. It's, it's gonna, and I like oranges. Because oh, okay. apples, like, uh, they get these, like, things in them. They're yeah. bad for you. Bruises? Yeah. Yeah? Bruises. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> we didn't even make any jokes this whole episode. I know, I know. It's like, well, this one will definitely bring some jokes, I think, okay? You saw this? That was so smooth. Like, it was like we practiced it. Yeah. Like, I mentioned jokes and then you said jokes. Like, Sorry, Don. No, no, you're good. Uh, so, uh, in Japan, or not in Japan, in China, authorities actually just confiscated a bunch of stoves. Yeah. Did you hear about this? No. Yeah. So, stoves that were actually branded as a KIRF iPhone gas stove. What? And so, what companies are doing in China now, because uh, China and Japan are having a lot of issues, well, Apple in general is having a lot of issues in the eastern territories. With basically people s stealing all their ideas or like bootlegging all their stuff. Like there's all those fake uh, I Apple stores in Japan and China that are popping up now. And they're selling Apple products, but they're selling used versions as new. So there's a lot of stuff going on like that. But I've never heard of this ever. And today I, I just saw this when I was looking up for topics. And this is actually a stove that some company decided to make. And they put the Apple logo on it and called it an iPhone. So then people will think that Apple is backing it so that they'll sell more. I think they could legally do that if it's out of country. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I think that is why Apple's having problems because they can't sue any of those companies because it has something to do with that. There's no coffee. Like our copyright is not exactly 100% the same in other countries. Throughout the world, right? Yeah. And so anyway, so China actually, they confiscated like hundreds of these. They have an ice stove? Yeah, so this stove is called an iPhone, and it's the KRF iPhone. Wait, the iPhone. actual stove is called an iPhone? Yeah, it's called a KIRF K iPhone, and it's just a stove, and it just, I thought it was super funny, and this whole article is just like a total joke, like, the dude basically writes it as a joke, but it looks like they, yeah, 681 of these were, were branded this way, but the rest of the stoves weren't, so they went in this, this, it sounds, this is what it sounds like, I don't know 100%, but this is what it sounds like, they went into like, <laughs> Uh, storage unit, and they found all these stoves, and one and 681 of them were branded as iPhones, which I thought, which I think is ridiculous, and I think that that makes. I'm I'm hoping that we get so big that people make Studio Dork stoves. What do you think? That'd be cool. Yeah, I want some fake Dork. us. <laughs> yeah, man, I I want someone to be fake. If you know anybody that wants to make a fake of any product with Studio Dork on it, I'm down. Do I'm it. I'm down too. Yeah, do it. Hey, uh, are you gonna get the new iPad, the iPad three? Are you? Gonna, I don't. I don't think I'm going to actually. I'm still pretty happy with my iPhone 1, or yeah. I, iPad 1, <laughs> iPhone 1, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, with my stove. I'm pretty happy with uh, mine as well, I feel like uh, it's uh, it's still way um, ahead of its time, even though it's, uh, when when I got mine in 2010, I think you probably got yours around the same time, right? Yeah, I got mine a month after it came out, I think you got yours like a couple months after yeah, it came out, right? Yeah, and I bought mine used. <laughs> yeah. But I f pretty much can do everything I need to do, I mean, I'm missing the camera, mm -hmm. and but I still... I think I use mine a little bit more than you You use yours. You don't use yours too much, right? Yeah, recently it's been more for the show, and then also um, I've been using it to read books every once in a while. But yeah. really, I don't use it. I used to. When we were in college, I used it. Yeah. I'd play games on it all the time, and I'd paint, I'd paint on it and stuff all the time, but now I you really don't. You should get don't. back into the painting thing. You think so? I used to like those. Yeah. You used to like when I did. But well, you should do them like half hour or something, because you used to do like a couple hours. Well, that's the thing is, speed paintings are so hard to do, and my finger would get really raw on the edge. So because might... you would do it for like three hours or whatever. No, well, the one I did of you took nine, by the way. <laughs> but you didn't know. Well, that makes that sense. Yeah, yeah. Of have you seen me? <laughs> yeah, I have seen you. And, <laughs> Just and the nose alone is probably like a few hours. Yeah, I'll link. I'll link one of my YouTube videos to them. Yeah. You know, if they really want I mean, to I used them. to like though. I think yeah. you should get back into that, and I think you should do them for half an hour or less. I think you should do them too. Ooh. If I'm gonna do them, you should do them. Bring sexy back. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing, Justin Timberlake style. <laughs> um, I'll see. I'll see what's up. Okay. Just something to like, uh, something to kind of exercise your mind. I, I, 
And for, for myself, I'm saying. Something to exercise. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying for me. I was no, like, for I'm me. I'm reading like four books yeah. right now, dude. I'm doing a lot of different things too, but I'm, yeah. I'm doing a lot of different things that are similar. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So I'm thinking about a couple of things too. And I think I need to get, I want to get involved more with na- like with nature and stuff. Maybe go like biking or things like that. More. I'm going to do that. Huh? I was going to go running today, but I just, I kind of woke up a little late, so. My, one of my clients was supposed to give me a bike. I think it's still going to happen. So oh, cool. Maybe do that and then maybe I can see if they can get two bikes. You think so? Maybe. All right. I'm down. I'll ask. If not, I mean, if you can get we, a... we made a good relation. I mean, I have a good relationship with them. Really good relationship. Okay. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm down to do that. I mean, people at work all the time are going hiking and stuff do like that. Do you like those, so the fixies? I can ride a bike. I don't. I mean, it, I don't. I've really never rode a fixie. It's like those real skinny, skinny wheel ones. The only, the only thing that makes a fixie different from everything else is the tires, I guess. It's yeah. Probably, and I think and it also, doesn't have that many speeds. It's like just one speed. I think. Yeah, it's, that's what fixie means. A fixed speed. So it's oh, one sprocket so versus smart. like multiple. Yeah. So I mean, I'd be down, but I heard it's super dangerous to drive in LA. Like, you know, we're not going to be able to record right. on Tuesday, right? Why not? I mean, we probably are, but we're using all these good topics. Yeah, that'd be fine, dude. Look, we're talking about fixies from an iPad 3. Yeah, I know, so? It's fine. <laughs> we're crazy. We're crazy it's like totally that, fine, people. Dude. We're getting good at We're getting better at this. I'm trying to get our radio up so then, like, we get picked up by radio stations. Oh, Power on the 6. Yeah, <laughs> I, w- I want to take over Kevin and Bean's spot. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can do we that, We can right? take over Ralph. That's the- Dude, I'm, but people, I'd love to uh, be people listening to us like in Europe, what? What these these? What I do you mean? I think Kevin and Bean is actually huge. Pretty I huge. think they're a little bit bigger than like you realize. No, I know, I know Kevin and Bean. K Rock itself, it's world famous. It says yeah. on their logo, so it's true. Yeah, and <laughs> I watched a movie from like uh, talking about the seventies punk yeah. punk scene, and K Rock was in there too. But they didn't call it K Rock. They K- they called it K R O K K R O Q. That that is K Rock. Yeah. I think it spells out. K-R-O-Q. It kind yeah. of spells it out, right? Yeah, I'm sure. If I, if, my, if I was spelling it out or my mom was spelling out, <laughs> then uh, yeah. my mom is a bad speller and I just taught my mom texting like a year ago or something. Yeah, she, so, she texted me yesterday. I, yeah, I have a birthday coming up, so I think she was trying to get our address to our place to get to like send me something. Yeah. And Cameron told me. Well, shouldn't have, I told, shouldn't have told you. Me. Why would my mom <laughs> want the address? She obviously wants to send something. You shouldn't have told me that. What's the big deal? You're so bad at secrets. You, no, I'm good at secrets. I just didn't think that was such a secret. Like, your birthday's obviously coming up. Your mom's obviously going to send you a Not gift. Not necessarily. I don't know for sure. I don't normally get anything for my stuff. Well, hold on, hold stuff. on. Let me, let me bring up. What's that? It's a, I was doing, they can't see, but I was doing the men in, I've been doing some men in black stuff at work, oh, so I get I you. doing the, You're doing the, where you raise my mind. I'm going to wipe your brain for I a second. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just banning ourselves with dork. Yeah, totally. Non-plural. No, yeah, so iPad. The new iPad supposedly is supposed to be coming out um, shortly. That's why we brought that up 10 minutes yeah. ago before we mm-hmm. went into all these different topics. Yeah. But uh, I don't really see, like I was saying, I don't really see a reason mm-hmm. to for purchasing one for myself as well. Yeah. Unless something is on there. Because we don't know. There might be all this stuff that's... Mm-hmm. Like, what happens if they give you free internet for two years? That's that's worth it. Imagine on, 4G. On iPad, yeah. Oh, oh, on the iPad Imagine. Because I heard... Somebody said that. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh. my friend told me that. Oh, my developer friend, Mike, he told yeah. me that there's a new... This is a different topic, but... Yeah, it's fine. He told me that Google... There's a new I, laptop possibly coming out. Yeah, Google Chrome. The Chrome... The Chrome... And that's going to have two, year, two years of internet for free. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, that that's thing, what he told that me. That thing's I, only like 400 bucks. Something like that. Wow. Now, now that's worth it just for the internet. Yeah. Think about that. Now imagine the next iPad that comes out and they say, we're going to give you free internet for free for two years. It's almost worth it. It is actually really like worth it. Like free internet for from like wireless without Wi-Fi. You go yeah. to Starbucks or you go to wherever. You go to mm-hmm. the park and you have internet. Apple could totally do that. I mean, why not? I think that will... If, if if they figure out a way to do that, I think they'll capitalize on the, the entire market. Oh, of course they will. I mean, of course. But I'm just trying to think of random situations where it would be almost worth it. I think it's going to have the Retina display. Yeah, um, we, yeah we've heard rumors of the Retina display yeah, for and, sure. it, and it being most, double, right? Yeah, probably. Double most likely. Display. Obviously, we don't really know exactly, yeah. but those are some rumors we heard. The camera is probably going to be like iPhone 4S camera, mm-hmm. which would be pretty good. That's one yeah. of the best cameras, I believe, on yeah. any phone. It's one of the best cameras. Mm-hmm. So that'll be... That'll be useful and probably have some other technology. If we have pressure sensitivity, that'll be pretty cool for, oh, like, man. for us. But I don't know. I don't know. That's probably really expensive. Yeah, but also it's, I still, even if the iPad 3 had pressure sensitivity, I would still want to wait till the 4. Just because then, by then, they'd have the kinks worked out of it. Because, I mean, yeah, it's going to be good, but remember the first Cintiq? I didn't have the first Cintiq, but I'm sure the first Cintiq didn't have as good of pressure points or as many, you know. Speaking of that, I need to get my uh, Wacom tablet back from another office where I was at. I, I left it there. Oh, yeah? One of my Wacom tablets. Oh, bummer. People need oh. to know that. Yeah, yeah, totally. You can totally have a Cintiq here and you don't even need a Wacom. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I actually have two Wacoms. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah. cool. Um, 
<laughs> oh, well, speaking on top of the iPad 3 still, um, we were talking about having, since the iPhone 4S has a, a dual core, a two, the dual core, right? That's what that's they have, in there, right? I'm pretty sure they have the dual core versus the single. Yeah, like the i3 or the i5. Or yeah, well, the mobile, the this is something I just kind of glazed on when I was, I was just kind of glanced at yeah. uh, when I was looking up topics, but I guess the World Mobile Conference is coming up, which where they go and they talk about all like mobile technologies and how the future and all the stuff that's going on. That's in Spain, I think, but... Like That's coming up, and one of the things, one of the huge topics there is there's some new technology called ice cream. So there's this thing called an ice cream sandwich with four with quad core. Back to the ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> no, ice cream sandwiches. It's, um, it's ice cream sandwich with. Quad core. I think it's a it's a new phone that's oh. that some companies coming out with, and they're calling it the ice cream sandwich, and it supposedly has a quad core chip in it. Wow, which is crazy. So I'm thinking there I must be some need for that, right? There must be some way that they're using it. Yeah, I'm thinking in the next like couple of uh, years, I think we're gonna really see crazy amount of cores. Like, cause right now, like one of, like the, one of the most powerful like consumer computers I think that I've ever seen is this. Uh, what is it? It's a twelve core processor, which is in the you can get into a Mac Pro. You can get like mm -hmm. that's the highest you can get in a Mac Pro right now. I think it's twelve cores or you sixteen cores. You can have like sixty four gigs of RAM or whatever. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. So I'm I'm wondering if if it's only around the next, like if the if the iPad three does not have quad core, I wouldn't I would almost guarantee it in the four in the uh, iPad four it's gonna have quad core. So I just think it's really interesting that we're moving because remember back in the day, like you think maybe five six years ago, a lot of computers didn't even have like quad core or even duo core for that matter core, yeah. yeah so it's just it's really interesting to see that because i remember remember when the the ps3 they they spent billions of dollars putting like they still haven't made back the amount of money that they put into r&d for that and all the r&d was for for them to figure out how to get two quad core processors into it and make it work together and sync together it's so crazy man so i don't know i just think that it's crazy the time we live in like we're kind of in the future we've said that before and so i don't know i just felt like expanding on your topic a little bit no that's cool did you ever get emails before in your life yeah I get emails have you ever gotten an email in your life yeah yeah dude yeah totally. you get emails sometimes yeah we're in the future we get emails electronic oh. mail but some of your email goes to to like a different folder right that you don't want uh you mean spam yeah yeah sometimes stuff will go to spam but not as often as it used to why yeah. is that called spam like why do they call it that because spam is disgusting. No, because isn't spam, it has something to do with spam being like an amalgamation of a bunch of different meats. It's almost like Frankenstein. You took my topic, dog. Oh, I wasn't even sure. I just kind of guessed it. I thought you didn't know that, so then I just asked. Oh, you. sorry. I wasn't sure. I just figured I was bringing <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. one, of my, um, one of my friends at work told me that, yeah, that's where it's from pretty much. Like oh. spam, it's like different different types of meats, like kind of the leftovers of different things mm -hmm. that you don't really care about. Yeah. Which is an exact meaning of those emails that you don't really care about, that you're just getting junk stuff yeah. from companies or uh, 1 800 flowers or whatever. Did oh, we just throw yeah. up on 1 800 flowers? <laughs> Did we just talk crap about them? Yeah. I use 1 800 flowers. I have too, yeah? actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so romantic. Oh, yeah. Who says I did it romantically? How, how do you know I didn't send it for a funeral? A funeral could be romantic. Yeah? In Wedding Crashers, when you're gonna. I mean, you're gonna catch the rebound of the world. Hey, right? it's a family <laughs> show. I know, I know. But yeah, so that's where spam came from. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, that that's definitely it. I it makes me. The term. Have you ever thought about like if if when the internet when that idea of spam was coming around, someone didn't just say call it file like the Frankenstein file or something? It's probably easy, just one syllable. I know. I'm just saying, like, what if spam didn't exist and they yeah. just came up with something? Everything else? came like that. Like the word via. That's a new word, right? Like, oh, I went to the. I went upstairs via the elevator. I it's think, a fairly new word. I think word. it's been around for like at least the past like ten years, probably. But, but it's still a fairly it's new. It's still word. new. Ten yeah. years is not very long, so. It sounds. It, ha it has a um, technology feel to it. That word. Yeah, yeah, right? totally. Yeah, did you ever see that that uh, that YouTube video of um, CNN when the at symbol was first coming about? Has that originally was an A inside of a circle, and it used to mean around. That's what it used to mean, and so then when the internet started getting big, they changed it to have that weird, so it's like the A, and then it actually, the tail connects and goes around. Why is it in CNN? Because it was just something that CNN, on their news channel, they were talking about technology, oh. and they were talking, and someone had brought up an email, and when they were reading the email, the girl read it as like, so-and-so-and-so, around blah 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 dot com and they were like what and then it was really <laughs> oh really i get funny. what you're saying yeah, now. Yeah. so when when the internet or the beginning when the internet was first becoming popular yeah. somebody there was an email and it was somebody's name and then the the at symbol was in there but they didn't know what to call it yet yes yeah, so they thought it was around so that's funny yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so, a good one 
Yeah, well, I guess we're just gonna hit a couple more topics just to finish off the show real quick. Cause I know Why you gotta kill it? No, I'm not. <laughs> just kidding. Um, well, we were talking about the mobile conference, and I just kind of want to bring up a couple things that are probably gonna be discussed at the mobile conference. Um, just to let you know that we do have another one recording, like in a couple of days. We might want to keep some topics. No, I know. I might do I'm, that. Y- yeah, you think so? I'm I keeping a couple. For well, you. I just want to bring up this one thing because yeah. I think it's interesting. Um, so this huge deal happened. This uh, so this guy he actually he filed a complaint against AT and T for slowing down his wireless speed, basically throttling it, and so he he was really pissed about it, and so he decided to go and take take AT and T to court. So he took AT&T to court about this, and AT&T actually lost. The guy actually won. And he didn't win that much money. Like, you'd, usually when you hear lawsuits, you're like, oh my gosh, you won like $300 million. But this guy actually won $850 in small small courts, you know, no, no, no biggie. But, so he was originally subscribed to an unlimited data plan, and then they started slowing down his data as he got more and more. As he used more and more, they started throttling it. And I guess AT&T does this normally. Yep. Nope. And this guy just noticed it, and so he decided that he was going to take him to court. And I just thought it was interesting that he actually won, because this could mean a huge deal for, like, AT&T customers. Like, you may not see as much throttling anymore, but it depends. Since it was only in small courts, if if the guy tr- decides to, or if someone else files a lawsuit like this and decides to take it to a higher court, it could actually force AT&T to stop throttling, which I don't have AT&T, but I know you do. So I have I thought AT&T, it, and I don't use the Internet that much for yeah. it to matter. Mm-hmm. But if I did, I would care, like Netflix or, yeah. or um, even Spotify. Yeah, Sp- I, I don't use Spotify very often because it doesn't work And you pay for it. <laughs> I don't use it on my phone, but I use it like well, at work and stuff. So, But yeah, it's, I just thought that that was a very interesting thing. And then um, I'm going to just use this topic because it's a very, very, very quick topic, this one. So we're on mobile still, and uh, this is something that happened earlier this week. Uh, mobile or Sprint actually almost bought Metro PCS, which is huge because Metro PCS is a pretty big. Is that the one that goes hello, hello, yeah. hello? Yeah, exactly. And it has the like the Indian dudes, and they go. In Those the... are really funny commercials. They are super funny commercials. So Sprint almost bought bought Metro PCS, which would have been a huge, huge deal for them. And they almost bought it for eight billion dollars, but they would have gotten so much money in advance. Like that's such a good business deal. But something made the CEO and the board members back out. And they haven't announced what yet. They're still That would unsure. make Sprint probably the biggest company. Because they, um, they bought another company like... Nextel. They bought Nextel. Yeah, and Singular was bought by... AT&T. AT&T, there you go, okay. But Metro PCS, the thing about Metro PCS that I think is interesting is Metro PCS, they have all those plans that are like no contract and like really cheap pay-as-you-go plans and stuff like that with like cheap phones and stuff like that. And Sprint doesn't have that. So I think it's... I don't know if it would be counter... Like contradictive for them to buy. Maybe Metro they'll just PCS. have a um, a new demographic or something. I don't know. So then they would just take on their like no contract plans. Something. Hmm. That I'd, sure. I'd be interested to see that, but obviously it's not going to happen. But I'm wondering if Sprint is out there looking at Metro PCS, if they're looking at other people as well. I think the next company to go away was probably going to be T-Mobile. Yeah, wasn't there something earlier in the year? Yeah, like AT and T was gonna buy T Mobile, yeah. I think, and then didn't happen. Mm. It was gonna be like a monopoly, or I'm not sure of the exact reason, yeah. but it didn't. It didn't fall through, but it almost happened. It was really close to happening, but that's the company that's suffering the most. That's one of the bigger companies that doesn't mm-hmm. have the iPhone. Yeah, because they got pretty much all of them. Pretty much all the other companies have the iPhone, like the big ones, like Sprint, Verizon, yeah. and AT and T, right? Yeah, whenever you walk into like I, I went to Best Buy with my mom because she was thinking about getting an iPhone, and this was right after the iPhone 4S came out, and I was talking to them about it, and they were like, oh, what service do you have? And and then my mom was like, oh, I have um, Verizon. She was like, oh, okay, well, the iPhones carry on all providers. And I just, it was interesting to hear them say that, but it's yep. because those are the, the only big ones are the ones that really matter. And know? I was in New Orleans, and there's different demographics of people. You could mm-hmm. see some people well, look a little bit wealthier, some people look a little bit less mm-hmm. wealthier, and blah, blah, blah. But everybody had an iPhone. I almost didn't see anybody that didn't have an iPhone. Yeah. And I mean, I had the iPhone in 2007, the first one when it first came out, and I mm-hmm. thought I was all cool and stuff. Yeah. Nobody, I mean, I didn't get it for cool purposes necessarily, but I always, I'm always usually on top of technology. I yeah. like having newer mm-hmm. stuff, especially when it comes to Apple. Mm-hmm. But now it's like everyone has it. It's like nothing special at all about yeah. having yeah, well, it. It's, it's just a, a powerful thing. It's a good device. I mean, yeah, and, it, and that's the thing. Besides it being a good, it's just good for all demographics from all, from people pro- from, from nine years old even mm-hmm. probably to yeah. whatever, to like to like 80 something years old or whatever so it just completely gets the entire all demographics of people pretty much yeah i've heard i've heard a, a couple of small stories about kids nowadays like little kids like little kids that like their parents have ipads and they've used ipads before how they they'll hand them a real magazine and they won't understand that they have to actually flip the page they think that it's just going to work like an ipad which is crazy to me like 
Do you imagine growing up with no magazines? Mm, and then... It's vice versa. What's happening to like people that first started using this stuff? Like, hi, what am I supposed to do with this? But the people that are only used yeah. to using stuff like this, that's crazy. Yeah, I like, wouldn't be able to imagine that though. Like, like do you yeah. imagine reading a magazine and being like, oh, I want to press that so I can read more about it? That doesn't work. Because they're that used way. to doing yeah. it that way, yeah. Because I think the story I heard was from one of my coworkers. She has a daughter that's like four, and she's used to using the iPad all the time. And so when she got a coloring book or a magazine, she thinks everything's interactive, that she just press it and it works. I just think that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so. I guess we're pretty much done then. We are pretty much done. You All guessed right. right. It was kind of a long show. But it was a good show. Good. We had too many good topics. Two was, two was better than most of our shows, and I don't like that. So we're getting ready to record on Saturday normally now. No. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, if you guys liked the show, or even if you didn't like the show, uh, definitely check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash studiodork. Uh, or you can catch us on Twitter at studiodork, or you can find us on Google+. Plus If you want to, just go click the button above the search bar on... Click it or ticket. Click it or ticket. Definitely wear your seatbelt wherever you go yes but uh Even yeah at google, dinner table. the google plus icon or the youtube icon you can do youtube.com slash studiodork as well you can find all of our shows on there and we're putting together some video content i need to talk to you about coming up soon um and then why are you making yourself sound all like leader like i don't know but then um also check out studiodork.com <laughs> we bring you this Stop. is the studiodork.com podcast so uh, i don't think we talk about the site as much we talk more about tech on the show but definitely go and check it out there's tons of good Articles, we're doing some new things. And you can win the Dork Survival Kit. You've yeah. got to survive in this world, in this crazy world we live in called Earth. Yeah. Or, yeah? Yeah. Um, you got to survive. We're coming so, up in three weeks. Three weeks. About uh, roughly three weeks. Roughly. Roughly <laughs> three weeks. I just thought I was like, I haven't actually calculated that. So roughly three weeks. Roughly. Um, March 17th is our one year anniversary of Studio Dork. One year anniversary. Yeah, from when we were. Look, I'm the hype man. When we were little babies and we <laughs> little were like. baby dorks. You know, rocking, uh, graduating school and craziness. Now we're like. Not big so time. Now up. we're big time. We're not big time yet. We're, yeah. little, we're still little. We're giving we're, autographs. We're still cra crawling a little bit. We go we're to Borders crawling. and give autographs Dude, even though they're totally closed. Did. That did happen, didn't it? Even though Borders is closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so one year anniversary is coming up. March 17th, we're going to announce a winner. Uh, how do you enter to win this Dork Survival Kit? Well, I'm going to tell you. All you got to do is go to Facebook.com or Twitter.com or Google Plus or YouTube or any any social network. Now you tell them in Spanish on. for our Spanish listeners. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to do Spanish, but I decided not to. <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to... I was going to be like, C.S. Mignon, that's all. Um, <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. Yeah. But, ah, but pero, yeah so, pero. so you can go on any of the social networks, anything you can find us on. I think we have a LinkedIn somewhere. I may not look at that, but I know we might have some some stuff like that. Yeah. Find us on any social network that enters you in for a chance. If you follow, subscribe, whatever you want to do, something that will make us know that you are looking at our stuff. Yeah. And um, it's good for you guys. Most likely, if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. you're into design, you're into you know new stuff. You're not yeah. just... You're most likely not boring. You're probably pretty good looking. So you're into this. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're into the stuff that we're going to have um, on our site. So definitely check that out. Yeah, so just go ahead and find any of the social networks, stuff like that. And we've got some good stuff coming up in the Dork Survival Kit. I've been kind of gathering some of my swag now and kind of putting it together. And Skinny jeans. It's getting crazy. Yeah, you better look out. It's going to be some good stuff. But, uh, yeah, so the one year, definitely do that. We're going to announce it March 17th. And uh, then, if you like this show or you didn't like this show, check us out on iTunes. Everything's uh, on iTunes. And uh, write us a review. Um, one to five stars. We prefer five stars. But you can give us a one star if you think the show really wasn't that good. And that's pretty much it, dude. Why don't you give us the star of David? Wow, that's, that's big. And it's four. I mean, six. <laughs> six? Six. Stars of David? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so that means that God reviewed us? And he left us a bad review. That's messed up, <laughs> dog. But six stars? So he did it. So he's fallible then. So he messed up. He put six stars and gave us a bad review. Yes. I meant six sides to the star. Yeah, that's really, yeah. I, <laughs> but was, I was trying to play it off. Yeah, yeah it's cool. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely review us on iTunes. And if you haven't subscribed to us on iTunes, subscribe to us on iTunes. That's I'm the doing, best way. I'm do, we're doing this new thing. I, I haven't I run this past you because it's new this week. So I'm going to... I'm going to upload all the shows a day before they go up on our site on iTunes. So then people that subscribe, they get oh, a little bit of a benefit. That's so, cool. So, yeah. That's so a good idea, actually. We normally get everything up on the site by Around Thurs the same Thursday time. night. But iTunes now, it'll be up there Wednesday, yeah, 24 so we, we'll hours give, before. We'll give priority to iTunes. So people that have are subscribed through iTunes, they'll yeah. get the thing probably like 12 to 24 hours before. Exactly. Before the, like YouTube and the other ways of even on our site. Right. Yeah, totally. So um, another thing I also want to talk about as far as the uh, the social networking thing, that with the, should we include Podomatic for the Dork Survival Kit 
Only the only reason I say this. I don't know about. The only reason I say this huh? is because we have in over the past since we got a pro account on there. Um, we got more people. We have like sixty followers now on there, and I don't I know. See that. They're all DJs and stuff, but it's just really interesting that like I don't know where I go on there. There's always like twelve friend requests or. You know, <laughs> Oh, well, well, if you're a DJ and you're on Podomatic, just follow us. Maybe it'll enter you. If not, it's cool, you know. But, yeah, so I think we're pretty much done, so take us out. Uh, we're out. We're out? Done? <laughs> you play baseball? <laughs> Three strikes and we're out? Yes. Okay. So, thank you guys very, very much for listening to us. We appreciate it from the bottoms and the tops of our hearts. Totally. And we will see you on the next Studio Dork Podcast with Gary and Cameron. Totally. <laughs> um, all right. Talk to you guys later. Peace. Cheers. <laughs> it was we like were, we were like in sync. Yes. So crazy. And we don't even like that group. You don't like in sync? Yeah. What the heck's wrong with you? I have the new king of pop, man. Justin Timberlake. You know, recording, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Is this thing on? Hello? Chin check, one, two, one, two. Oh, oh earthquake. <laughs> Sorry, let's flip it around. <laughs> Just because of the mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Now we got some. The, engin- the engineer knows. I'm going to have some poopers, bloopers. Oh, yeah, engineer, yeah, engineer. Yeah, 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 uh, totally. uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And then I watched. The, my big fat Greek wedding. You know who's in that? One of the NSYNC guys. I don't remember the guy's oh, name. Oh yeah, with the beard. That. Yeah. Oh yeah. That movie's good. My big fat Greek wedding. It is actually pretty good. I've heard a lot about it, but I've never actually. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, interesting. I know. You, you uh, like all my topics. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and billboards. Do we really need them? Um. Did you see that Time movie with Justin Timberlake? It was on the airplane. I haven't seen it yet, man. Because I, I saw it. I saw it when it came out in the theater. I don't know what we're talking about. This, but yeah. That's okay. It's after show, not. It's after show, bloopers. man. You can do whatever. Yeah. No, it's the bloopers. I want to make. I want to act like. I want to act like. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is a mistake, but in reality, I meant to say it. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, it's uh. Anyways, that movie. I think it's just called In Time or something like that with Justin Timberlake, and it's the idea is extremely good, but the movie's not so good. And I think we talked. To, I think I mentioned. Yeah, it, we but, talked about it when you saw it, but I still want to see it. Yeah, because the idea is good. Existed. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely. Check that out. I'm. Yeah. Do we sound like chipmunks right now, or do we sound regular? Do you want to try and do chipmunk voices real quick? <laughs> yeah, give me your peanuts! <laughs> what? Don't, don't chipmunks eat that? Don't chipmunks eat peanuts? Yeah, that and acorn. And, and acorns. So, yeah, lots, I don't know. lots of nuts. They like nuts. So, you're not a vegetarian for 40 days and 40 nights? No, no, no. We're not doing, I'm not going to do the lead <laughs> thing. Uh, a lot of people are doing that, and somebody brought that up as a joke. Like, you should give up being a vegetarian for lunch. But, you know. Well, we're done with our Studio Door Podcast, episode 20. I hope you guys Thanks enjoyed this show. Thanks for being on iTunes, us on Facebook, Twitter, Thanks, all this stuff. See you later. Yep. Bye. Bye. I would be down again. Are we sooner. sounding like Alvin and the Chipmunks right now or like regular people? Do you want me to do the whole blue, the whole after know. show? I think it was funny. I was cracking up the whole time. Well, that's because last, so last week you, when we did it, you were singing and then also there was a lot of points where I couldn't tell who was who. So I was like, you were doing the sound effects and then I know where you were just like, we are there. And it was just like... That was so uh, cool. I like that. I uh, like that. I like the little touch. It was it was pretty funny. But when so. we say goodbye, do you think people know to? Uh, we should put that in the beginning of the show so people know to listen to this. And people will like this so much that they'll skip the record show and just go. I don't want to put it at the beginning. No, I mean tell people to listen to make sure to listen to the. Oh, whole okay. Thing. Listen, like listen to bloopers. Hey, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can. That's totally fine. Or at the end of the show, we could just say, "Don't forget the after show is coming up." No, but they'll never know about it if they're only listening to the regular part of the show. This is our HBO special, man. Okay, you're saying. Okay. (laughs) I'm cool with it either way, man. I'm totally fine with it. Have you ever heard of Astronaut's Wife? It's a movie, by the way. Sorry. Sounds crazy. It sounds crazy? It's after I saw Ghost Rider, there's this dude that I've been hanging out with at work that he actually... You replaced me? No, no, no. Well, this guy's a business analyst, so he's really interesting because he, he has to stay up on technology, so I talked about technology. You replaced all me? Time. All the time, dude. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, we, were, we went to Ghost Rider, yeah. and he, we were both talking about how bad that movie was, but he said that the worst movie he's ever seen was Astronaut's Wife. I don't like seeing movies that are bad. I don't either, but I'm, it makes me interested to see it just because it's like, I want to see how bad it is. Like, what if that movie's really good? Like, I've had some movies that I really like that people said were terrible. 
So, but what's crazy about that movie? I know though, some of those people. Oh yeah, yeah. That said it was terrible. That you <laughs> liked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, definitely a movie that uh, was filmed down the street. And, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. No, it wasn't even that bad. Oh but yeah, I, I thought that was your whole point for me. Like, yeah. Yeah. okay. <laughs> um, but the crazy part about Astronaut's Wife is yeah. Johnny Depp is in it, and uh, Charlize Theron is in That's it. That's funny. Johnny those Depp. are two th pretty act decent actors, yeah. you know. So it's just interesting. I don't think Johnny Depp has ever won an Oscar. Really? I don't think so. I'm not positive. I don't think Tom Cruise is either. Really? I don't think so. Not positive, but I heard something like that. Well, you know what Tom Cruise is really good at? Wearing shoes? Running. That are big. Running and jumping on stuff. He used to come to the theater that I used to work at, and he always wore he wore those shoes that made him a little taller. Oh, really? Oh, because he's no really offense, short, Tom. right? No offense, Tom. No, 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 yeah, Tom, yeah, it's cool. If you want to be on our show, just let us know. Yeah, let us know. We'll, we'll give you an Oscar. A studio dork Oscar. Yeah, yeah. dork yeah. possible. <laughs> Mission dork possible. <laughs> There's so much tech in that movie. Why we might as well give him, like, an Oscar. <laughs> should we make, like, our little studio dork guy that we used to have, should we make him a little award, and then we call it, like... Oh, yeah, we used to have those. And what would we call it? Oh, dork of the month could be that. We get, We'll get little, like, you can, you made a styrofoam version, you should just oh, make we have styrofoam have an, we have to have make another dork of the month. Oh, you know, we forgot to mention the topics coming up. No, I, Your I, idea. I mentioned it a little bit. You did? I when I was talking about I must have not been paying attention. When I was talking about, um, when I was talking about, uh, Aber cause that's what, that's my next thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm reading all these books that are coming up in the movie, so I'm gonna write a review of each book. Well, that's and, good, and I think you, yeah. I think you didn't talk about the books too much. I think you did a good amount of talking about them. Well, you wanna know why it sounded good? Because it was interesting what I was talking about to you. Why I think the other stuff that I've talked about, you didn't think were very interesting. <laughs> I think that's. It's a Saturday. Is. Man is different. Uh, yeah, I think, and also we're both kind of awake, so we're both kind yeah, of. Yeah, normally we're tired when recording. We're yeah. just really tired after work, and then you're usually in a rush to go party and stuff. And <laughs> well, this next show's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh. Because I'm going to happy hour before, so I'm not gonna get too messy. And up, I think but. it's my birthday, the day of the show, that same day. Well, then you should come out to happy hour. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I don't like those answers, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm weird with uh, doing that, with going to happy hour the same day the night the night before I work and stuff. Why we're not gonna we're just gonna have a couple beverages? <laughs> you know, we'll see what's up. Some juice uh, boxes. That's all. But uh, yeah, I might go to your thing today though. Yeah, we'll Maybe. see how it goes, man. I don't know if this was this was just like a regular show. Nothing funny happened. It's an after show. What do you want? Ah, uh, well, something funny. Well, be funny. You're the funny one. I can't one. help doing funny when we're doing all serious. You're the funny guy. Come I'm not on. the funny guy. I think you're only funny on Tuesdays. We should start having you do stand up on Tuesdays. <laughs> While sitting down. No, no, no. Only if you're in a wheelchair, man. So that concludes your after show. Experience. Wait, what do we sing? Should we sing at the end of every show now? <laughs> that would be awesome. Because you converted. <laughs> I know we're going to sing, but with, uh, like, in different. So we'll do deep or. High pitch. We sing like dorks, and we, some of us are Jewish, so we don't need porks. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a rapper. I'm talking extra songs that have actual lyrics, not us making up songs, oh. unless you want to make up Cut songs. Cut that out, yeah? No, no, I'm definitely leaving that in now. <laughs> did you hear in the last episode, though, like when I did the, cr I put crickets in there at the end. Too. Yeah, that was dope. Okay. <laughs> no, you did that good. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I so. <laughs> You're an engineer now. Yeah, dude, that's what I do. I'm, I'm, I've got a side job as an engineer. Yeah. I didn't tell you, but I'm You I'm wrote books with my grandpa. <laughs> to no, make metal. But I'm, no, but not Those are real engineers, right? I, 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 uh, my uncle is an environmental engineer. Ooh, moded, modation. Yeah, what up? <laughs> now you told me about your uncle. Yeah. And when I met your other uncle, I was like, I have an uncle too. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Coachella. All right, uh. It's not. It's not? What I told the? You about that. I told you right. Hold on, man. Let me get mad after the show. No, what are you talking about on the show? We're so, not going to go to Coachella? No, I can't get. No, we could just stay with your peeps. And then we're just going to hang out outside of Coachella and listen to music? No, we could sit on the roof. Okay. I mean, we can do that if you want. I'll, I'll talk to him. I just, I talked what to him. What were you talking about? Getting a ticket? I, I was it? talking about doing that, but then you said if I can figure out how to get tickets. So I oh, no, there's no tickets, way you can get tickets. I didn't think so. I already so, know. So. <laughs> tickets got sold out probably. A long time ago, I know. No, but they probably got sold out in like 10, 15 minutes. No, I know. It's the biggest show, I think. The second biggest show in the country or the biggest show in the country. Okay. In our entire country. Interesting. Well, I, I don't know. We can definitely. But I think go Christian's going. Christian's one yeah, of our buddies he, from school is going. Yeah, he posts on Facebook like music of people that are going to be there, and he's like, the days. Oh, yeah, he and he's been to it before. Yeah. I think yeah. he went to it when it was easier to, like, sneak in or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Totally, yeah. But I'll, I'll definitely figure it out. I mean, we can go out there and just kind of kick it. I cool, guess. yeah. Cameron has uh, some family that lives next to Coachella, where it's like a really big concert and has a lot of cool mu uh, music. Yeah. And he's got a fa a fa like some family that, that have a house. Really close to it, we could just sit on the roof and watch it. 
Yeah, my uncle is like huge in the music too. He's you'll you'll. Is this, this is the same uncle that I met in Sony. No, no, no this is a different uncle. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, but it's a different <laughs> uncle. It's um he he. What's cool about him is he's from Brazil originally, but he's so into music that every single ticket he's ever bought to a show he has on this big board in his thing, and he'll he always brings it to like. People I keep to a lot of my tickets like too. That. I even keep my flight tickets. Oh really? Yeah, he like displays all this stuff, and he's huge into music, so. Oh yeah, the little for, band. To show them. Yeah, yeah, he's showing me a purple band on his. This was from New Orleans. That's what I figured. So That's I was cool. I was VIP, very important person. You were VIP. I was. Awesome, dude. Um, this is not really like a blooper show, or it's not oh, after it's show. Not so make show. it all, all Alvin. All of it? Let's we'll do all this. And then <laughs> I thought we were supposed to sing something. Well, we were, and then you like went into Coachella, and we started talking about Coachella. Oh, we can't stop the show. We can't. It's a never-ending show. <laughs> the never-ending show. The show. Never ends. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever? Ever, ever, ever. 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 Gary and Cameron? Out. Out. A bounce. Cheer. Cheer. <laughs> uh, I saw a guy get ro rolled in a wheelchair in a mosh pit. Oh, yeah, we punched that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. They raised a guy in a wheelchair in a mosh pit. Yeah, so I show his, they raised him in the chair and then he fell out of the chair. That's crazy. <laughs> And then somebody had a baby in a car. Oh, that was nasty. That was nasty. <laughs> I don't know why I just cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> that was like closing my eyes. Like, ah! And then somebody had a pimple or something in their back. And they were yeah. popping it and all this stuff. No, the lady took a scalp. Ah! She came up and then she went. Oh, like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all this liquid though. Make this yeah. whole thing Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah? And Theodore. And Theodore? No <laughs> way, dude. No way. <laughs> uh, I think we're out. Are we out? How long is this show? Is like an hour and 15 probably. Wow, look at that. Almost on point there. It's like you've done this before. I've done this a couple times. Yeah? I'm a dog experienced. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um... <coughs>